point for you the afternoon. And we won't uh, wait for the people who are late. Um, thanks for still being around. Uh, I know it's a time where you actually digest and you're going to sleep, so I'm going to try to make you not sleep too much. Uh, I'm going to do a small talk about uh, BLC 300. Um, it's going to be 20, 30 minutes. Uh, my slide were done in the last 15 minutes, so it's going to be awesome and great with amazing designs. Uh, but uh, I think it's going to be interesting for you guys. Uh, a small summary about 2.2.x. Um, so we released 2.2.0 in February. Um, we actually had something like about 15 million uh, downloads when we started uh, to move to 2.2.1. Uh, and um, um, why is the this number so low is, of course, as usual for the .0, we did not activate auto-updates uh, because of the usual bugs. Uh, so those, those are only people who went on the website. Uh, actually, it went quite well, the usual rush, but um, quite better than the last uh, 2.1.0, which was a complete uh, catastrophe. Uh, yeah. We're improving, right? Um, so we're releasing 2.2.1 in April 16th. Um, that's quite rare that it stays for so long um, without having a 2.2.2. I will do one next week, I hope. Um, that means that there wasn't that many horrible desk crushing bugs. Uh, but still, no go to meet at support. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, no go to meeting support. Maybe you want my, the, the microphone. Yeah, here's the microphone. Are there any security issues? Uh, there are many security issues in 2.2.1, uh, especially in Libavi Codec, and two that are still not fixed. Uh, and, and the Libavi Codec PNG decoder, um, we need to fix that one. Uh, since uh, April 16th, we have uh, 102 million downloads on Windows on vidalian.org. So that, of course, uh, as usual, outside of download.com, telecharger.fr, scarica.it, and all those other amazing c.cnet websites. <laughs> Um, the good thing is none of those websites now uh, ship crap with it uh, because I tried and actually started suing a CNET, uh, which actually works. <laughs> um, and also, uh, I think uh, for um, during two months, I sent uh, two or three the, uh, DMC letters to Google, uh, automatized um, to get uh, the VLC.us to get down. So now they're on the short page of Google.com, so they're gone. Um, which is good. Uh, as usual, OS 10, 10, 10 million, which is so still the same. We have 10% of downloads uh, on, on, on Mac OS. That, this doesn't change. Uh, and that makes 23 million downloads per month, which is 750 uh, per day, which is, I think, quite okay. Uh, still two thirds of um, updates and one third of people coming on the website. Um, but let's not speak about 2.2 too much because it's boring and it's fast. So let's speak about the future. Uh, 3.0 veterinary. Uh, veterinary is actually a witch from uh, this world. Um, Bullshit. Yes, Patricien. Patricien. C'est Patricien. Oh, it's Patricien from uh, this world. So I need to read more from my this world uh, thingies. I don't know who decided the name, but doesn't matter. Um, so it's actually a major version, um, which probably is the first version where we're actually going to synchronize a number between all the versions of VLC. So we stop having confused users. Although I don't know if we can have non-confused users. <laughs> you should read my blog. Um, small auto-promotion every week. I uh, do a blog post about what's going on on the desktop version of VLC, iOS, Android, Windows RT, and so on. So you can know what's happening uh, technically without watching and reading all our mailing list. So that's pretty cool. Um, pictures. <laughs> there are actually pictures, yes, when I do conferences and when I, we go to academy. Uh, um, we are at 4,735 commits since 2.2.0 uh, split, which is one year ago. Um, we have more than 2,500 uh, commits above that on the mobile port, so that's pretty much. Uh, 120 different uh, committers um, this last year, quite our best. And that is outside uh, translations, of course, um, because translation is cheating. Uh, and 15 more on mobile that don't uh, commit to the desktop. Uh, there was a lot of work and a lot of commit, lots of regressions, of course, um, but they are going to go away soon. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Um, a few years ago, we started discussing about what the VLC concept was and the ideas, and one of the best summaries plays everything, runs everywhere. Um, it's not actually true, but we are trying to do that, and 3.0 is a big step on, on that direction. Uh, yes? Um, um, some of the people of the web who know um, so much about video decided to care about video a few years ago and that gave us some amazing ideas and amazing formats um, including uh, web VTT <laughs> and adaptive streaming. And of course, while adaptive streaming was so great, everyone had to do their own version of adaptive streaming. Um, in 3.0, we have a new module to, that is able to do HGS, which is Adobe Adaptive Streaming. The good thing that is this one is completely dead. Um, then, of course, Microsoft uh, pushed uh, Smooth Streaming. So they pushed Smooth Streaming, and then they decided that it was going to die. So they pushed Dash, and then they realized that Dash was not going anywhere and not starting. So they pushed Smooth Streaming again. Um, great. Uh, in 3.0, we have a module to do smooth streaming playback, and that's great. Uh, there was a full rewrite of MPEG Dash module. Um, the old um, Dash module was basically the one that was uh, developed by the community who were doing Dash as a proof of concept, uh, but it was too far from uh, the actual spec. Um, so, Francois, we took a lot of work and basically rewrote everything, and also at the same time we wrote the HLS one um, and merged them, which is good because we have one code base that is actually dashed in HLS and maybe at some point will be also smooth streaming and AGS. So 85% 80, of the code and especially the logic to do adaptation is the same. Um, of course, that's going to give us a few regression, but uh, now we support most of the big dash um, formats except the YouTube one, which is dash webm vp9. Um, a lot of work on decoders, although lots of um, work is not actually done by VLC, um, but most of it is done by Coda, uh, by adding stupid codecs <laughs> to limit the codec. Vittorio, where are you? Thanks. <laughs> uh, there was a support of a modification of the Opus decoder to support uh, RTP uh, playback and streaming. Uh, we have a Dallas support, so uh, technically you need to enable it because it's not enabled by default because the bitstream is not frozen. But if you have the lib data lib, you can actually play in VLC. Um, Arib subtitles, so those are, I guess no one of you care, but Japanese subtitles. So yeah, except if you watch anime and hentai, you might care. <laughs> you need subtitles for hentai. Um, we got an amazing uh, libmpeg 123 decoder that is probably going to replace the libmad one. Um, that was added. Um, we support um, AOB LPCM. So for the one who don't know, that is HD, um, no, DVD Audio's LPCM version. So that's great because, well, no one has DVD Audio's, but we can play them. Uh, <laughs> well, it's still the same thing. We need to play everything, right? Even stupid stuff. We have uh, actually a big BPG decoder, then the modification of HEVC for uh, doing pictures by uh, Fabrice Bellard. Uh, I don't know, I don't think it's enabled by default, of course. And of course, Canopus HQX and so on, all the, um, I call them the Vittorio codecs. <laughs> but most of the work was mostly on the formats, actually the maxes. Um, for some reason, starting last year, we started to have lots of people complaining about our move support, which is weird because no one complained. And then we realized that QuickTime 10 something uh, started not working on Windows, and also the QuickTime 10 something didn't play the, some of the old codecs after an update of um, Mac OS. And so a lot of uh, professionals started using VLC as a playback and they couldn't play it anymore. Uh, so a lot of work especially was on boring audio things, are in move and Francois fixed quite a few of those. We support hgdvd.evo files, which is also great because now we, that we have DVD audio, we can support another dead format for <laughs> disk. <laughs> we fixed a few stuff uh, to be correctly playback of uh, Opus in TS and also encoding Opus in TS, I believe. Um, of course, Dala in Org in both ways, although it's useless. Uh, we support now um, a basic TTML subtitle, um, thanks to Outreachy. Um, of course, we don't support the whole spec because there is 
10 specs that are different because of course there is a EBU one, the IRT one, there is a Microsoft one, there is so many others. But it actually works and it's in the end, sure it's a big spec, but it's less stupid than WebVTT. So um, we added the um, 608 in MP4, uh, which wasn't supported because we are not American, so we don't care. Uh, we now support SBV subtitles, uh, which is, I think, not an official format, but it's a YouTube format specific. Yes, Thierry? Doesn't know. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy, but we have it. Um, we fixed a few bugs, especially some really nice, so we can have a DTS inside Wave inside MKV, and actually works. It is useful. <laughs> and continuing about dead formats, um, for some reason, some creative ADPCM in AV and VOG file were not playing. That fits. Uh, Dmaxes, uh, the big ones uh, after 2.1, uh, you remember in 2.2, uh, most of the org uh, Dmax, especially on seating, was rewritten. A lot of stuff on AVI and WMV was done, and so we go on, and for uh, this year it was um, TS Dmaxes and uh, MP4 Dmaxes. The biggest reasons are um, adaptive training crap that are basically out of spec. Uh, also supporting stuff like the, all the top fields and Dreambox that are doing TS that is not compliant. Um, also some amazing ideas like TS without PAT and PMTs. Supposed to play back that. Thank yeah. Linux TV for that. Hmm? Linux TV for that. Yeah, Linux TV. Is, I mean, no one is it from Linux TV around here. <laughs> okay, uh, Devin, I will kill you after. Uh, <laughs> I understand. Uh, but yeah, a lot of this was also for um, Dash and, um, and, um, and HLS decoding, and also for video decoders where we actually needed to do a few stuff differently, especially for the Microsoft, for the Apple video toolbox. Access. Um, we support browsing now, um, so you can actually browse uh, SMB, FTP, SFTP, and soon uh, WebDAV directly in VLC. The use case is mostly you play, you do VLC slash the folder, and it's a distant folder and you can play it. But it's mostly because we had to rewrite all our this service discovery, UPnP and DLNA, and we are going to actually split the discovery from the browsing. So that was added by the, in a kind of PF read, in a kind of read there in uh, the core. Uh, we have a libdsm module, which is a rewrite, a new write uh, of support of Samba, so it's a new library, um, but we can't use uh, libsamba client because it's GPLv3 and that doesn't fly on many uh, open, not open source, but web stores, especially iOS and Windows Phone. Um, and also the legality on Android is so-so, so we had to rewrite. This is a very simple library that is just uh, playback and read, so there is no, and it's just like SMB v1 and v2. Uh, but it works, and it's so easier to compile than uh, some amazing libsamba thingy. We write, of course, our UPnP module, sorry for the capitals. We support DVBT2 on Windows and Wasapi input, okay. We support SATIP, but also we support ARIPTS uh, decoder, so we can actually, uh, with a virtual cam, decode uh, the encrypted streams from uh, Japanese playback, so when you watch Antai next time, it will be nice. <laughs> Okay, um, this is one of the biggest work that has been done, so um, if you remember correctly, but even if you didn't, um, we, in the past VLC was doing the GPU decoding and then copy back the memory back to the CPU and then display it differently, which was cool because you could do other stuff. <coughs> However, it's very bad because it kills you bandwidth, especially on Android and so on, and the mobile board. So we spent um, a lot of time, thanks to Remy, who first did it on, um, on Linux for VDPIU and then was extended everywhere. Uh, so MAL is the one from the Raspberry Pi, uh, Android Media Codec, OMX, uh, DXVA now, and DXVA 11, which is uh, the Direct 3D 11 bastardization of the DXVA one, and Video Toolbox. So now we can do actually decoding, and when we pass um, through all the stage and the filters and the video output, you just get a reference to the frame instead of the actual frames. Um, that is quite problematic because VLC was not done for that and brought a lot of issues. And especially because most of the silicon vendors do hardware decoding in a different way. 
so you have to blacklist them, especially on Android, because there is no spec and there is, of course, no correct test suite on Android. Uh, that's not news. Um, also, we did uh, support of HVC decoding, uh, mostly for Windows, DXVA, and Android. Um, um, that was mostly tested on, on Windows with the NVIDIA cards and on Android with the Intel ones, uh, because that was the hardware we had. And also, we support um, hardware decoding and rotation in MediaCollect, Direct3D, and OpenGL, so you can actually watch your iPhone videos directly rotated on the GPU. Um, a lot of stuff happened on the VLC. I think we had like 20 more uh, new calls and APIs. Why is LibVLC moving faster? Is it basically because we are dog fooding now? Uh, LibVLC is actually used on Android, on iOS, on Windows RT, and the new <coughs> Tizen port. Uh, and in the past, and of course the desktop is not using this API. Um, so now we're using, and we made a lot of work, so it actually looks exactly the same classes on all the platforms, even if it's not the same languages. So that's pretty cool. And we added a new uh, wrapper binding in C++, which is libvlcpp, which is C++ 11, or is it 14? I don't remember. Well, some C++ horrible stuff, uh, which allows us to use lambdas for the callbacks. And we had an extension for the WinRT, the Windows uh, C++ CX extension. Other cool stuff, um, Chromecast. Uh, this is one of the most ask um, thing we have on the mailing list and the support and every time we do a release on any platform is uh, when is the Chromecast module com arriving? So it was emerged in February or March. The biggest problem with that, um, it was done as a streaming module, the biggest, we have like technical problems and legal problems. Um, the technical problem is that um, this is done to be a, a, a pool uh, API. Basically you give it a URL and, and you say, okay, go and fetch on this Nginx server somewhere and play back this file. And that's a use case for Netflix and VOD and so on. But here, people are going to have their own device with their own, um, and they don't understand the difference between VLC and Netflix, basically. And so they want um, to push, actually, on the Chromecast, which is fine as long as you don't pause and you don't seek, because as soon as you seek, well, you're going to have, um, actually, the timestamps are not going to increase and you're going to drop everything. Um, so that's... I mean, the, this, the Chromecast is not done for that. Uh, AirPlay is actually done for that, but uh, Chromecast isn't. Uh, one of the reasons is that they basically have a very good uh, VOD service, so they want to push, uh, to push people to buy stuff there, and Apple doesn't, maybe, whatever. And then we have lots of legal problems because we can't use the SDKs on, because um, those SDKs are not open source. Um, they are not open source on Android, nor on iOS, and on all the other platforms, they don't exist. Uh, the only solution we had for Windows was um, some guy who told us that they were going, we could use a kind of um, API in order to launch Chrome that was going to take a URL from VLC and string to it. Um, and that was only going to work on Windows, not on Mac. So it was like completely crazy. Um, so we said that we were not going to use the SDK, we did our own communication and basically they kind of legal threatened us. Um, but, so it kind of works, but it kind of not work because you need hardware decoding and hardware encoding if you want to have like, to chain, to take your 10, 10 bits uh, 264 hentai to, to, to something else, right? Um, so it's getting done and it will probably work in some, um, some case or another uh, for 3 or 0. Uh, we have still some encoding in hardware, we have the QSV encoder. Uh, and we can still encode through OMX. Um, we need to extend that on other platforms, but there is not many API that are actually usable and soon. Um, and other stuff, uh, we have half bus support, so we can do um, complex text layout. So I guess, except if you are from India and Thailand, you don't care. But that's pretty good because that's one of the biggest market that we have. And we have a version of Libas without from config on Windows and Mac. Um, <laughs> Yeah, so that means we don't have this rebuilding the cache thing that is almost a joke now. <laughs> but of course, all of you are good guys and on Linux, so you don't care. 
Um, Android. Um, now we are on VLC Android 1.5. Um, the numbers are going to increase very quickly in order to achieve 3.0 at the same time of the desktop. Um, maybe this is an older. Is it an older? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So if you look, this one is the actual Oload team. You know the team. So that was Android 1.0. We managed to be Oload. That's week before Google said, okay, we changed. We moved to Material. Fuck you guys. <laughs> Uh, so the actual, this one is actually um, material, right? Yeah, with a fab button, Ooh, fab button, fab button, whatever. Um, but also uh, we moved uh, to Android TV, um, and it works quite well. And we have already 60 million users on Android uh, on all the versions. Um, it's pretty cool. It more or less works. Um, However, every time there is a new release, everything breaks. So, for example, in 6.0, you can't run VLC. A lot of work has been done on VLC for WinRT. So, for those who don't know, WinRT is a new set of API that is not the same thing as Windows RT, and that is not the same thing as um, modern Windows, because that's also something different. That is now also, they don't exist anymore, they are called universal apps. But they're not in universal because there is different versions per architecture. And they're not universal in the way that they don't run on Windows 8.1. But it's still the same language. And of course they don't support um, uh, compilation, um, conditional compilation because everything is XML description so you can't do... Yes. Uh, so that took a lot of time. And of course, you can't use the usual direct 3D hardware acceleration because they don't support that. You can't F open a file because it's dangerous, so everything is asynchronous. Um, now you can use a network streaming, but you can't open a DVD, you can't open a Blu ray, you can't open a CD, you can't open a, a webcam, you can't open a DVB, and so on and so on. However, uh, since uh, Thomas did a lot of work, we actually have a, a cool UI. Uh, that is probably one of the best UI we have so far compared to all the platform on desktop. Um, and actually, we now have a version that is universal ish and looks like Windows 10 applications and that actually runs on Windows Phone in the same solution with a kind of few tweaks. Um, the good thing about that is that probably going to be most the same code that is going to run on Xbox One next year. So, we'll probably VLC on Xbox One, yes, next year. IOS. Um, VLC on iOS is still getting strong. Um, we still manage to make it completely free and open source uh, without, and sometimes it's a bit of a headache because uh, Apple makes it very difficult to do that. But so far it's great and it's still um, compatible and it's still not down. It doesn't have uh, Dolby anymore, but soon it will get it back. <laughs> yes, we have a version that works on Apple Watch. Um, since iOS, VLC on iOS 2.6, and on 2.7 we have a watchOS 2, right? Yes, Felix? Yes, that's correct. Uh, so, and the biggest question is when can we have actually have playback on the watch? <laughs> Felix? Felix said next month. <laughs> Tomorrow. No, um, I'm not sure it's actually doable, but now uh, since, because all of you know everything about watchOS, since watchOS you can actually do uh, applications on the watch and just not a remote control, so maybe we could get something. 240p? Yes? Yes. Great. <laughs> Let's do that. Um, and I don't have a slide, I'm sorry, but uh, as you've seen, uh, Felix added some libvlc support uh, for tvOS, which is a kind of iOS modification for Apple TVs. And of course, I spoke about that in my blog, and we had like a huge people speaking about that, even when there was no screenshot and nothing is ready. Um, yes, for 3.0 it would be nice if we were able to do that many platforms at the same time, which is iOS 9, Apple Watch tvOS, WinRT with Windows Phone, Windows 10, Windows RT, which is the ARM version of Windows 8.1, and not the same thing as Windows Win RT, right? Uh, Xbox One, maybe, and uh, Android plus Android TV, of course. For Android, we still haven't s uh, lost the compatibility with Android 2.1, it still works, and it still works fine. Uh, we don't have hardware coding, of course, on such uh, OS. And Tizen, we are working on the Tizen port, um, especially for the now for the Z1 and the Z3, which are the phones that you have in India. 
<coughs> but the thing interesting on Tizen is that it's going to be on all the Samsung smart TVs, which is around 40% of the market. So if we can get Tizen TVs, Xbox One, and Apple TVs, that could be nice. Uh, we'll just need uh, to have something else for the other one. Firefox OS, please. <laughs> Firefox OS. <laughs> it's also going on TVs. So Firefox OS, the creator of what was this? What was it called? Um, Goto Gecko. No, 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 no. The web as, uh, ASMGS, <laughs> the compiler. Yeah, with the founder, the founder of Mscripten that said, "Well, you can port because we have something." And the answer of Kami was, "Do you have threads?" No. We have web workers. <laughs> <laughs> so there is no way to do a Firefox OS um, because they don't have threads. And, and also because they are clueless um, about video, which I don't get because some of the best video guys are working for Mozilla. How do you explain that? They're not going to fix their problems. <laughs> but it's not that much of a joke because there is new things called WebAssembly, yes, which is actually some kind of um, intermediate representation that we could use, and that it that gives two things, which is one is uh, module loading of binary code and threads in not the first version of the second version, and actually Chrome is working on that with Opera and Mozilla and maybe Intel, um, Microsoft. Microsoft, which means that that. This part is actually, you could imagine having a VLC there. Uh, I think so, uh, just for streams. But it's not completely insane. But Firefox OS, as long as they don't support that, is insane. Other stupid OSs we are not on and we need to be on? We are on Solaris. Uh, I think you forgot about WebOS. <laughs> <laughs> Because all the Panasonic TVs, no, is it Panasonic? LG. All the LG TVs are going to be WebOS. Um, um, Fire OS. What? Fire OS. Pebble. Fire OS. Amazon. Oh, we are we are on Amazon. Of course, all the Amazon Fire TVs. PlayStation. PlayStation Four is a good question we've asked. Um, so far, the answer is we are not sure. We want to allow um, other media players than ours. So I hope it's going to change because I hope, well, to be honest, I hope that the Xbox One was going to move their ass faster and so that before the end of the year with apps and they would crush the PS4, so then the PS4 wanted to react and did an open app, but the Xbox One seems to be very far further than December, so I don't know if the PS4 is not going to win. However, at IBC they said that they were thinking about this, so maybe. Others? Probably. Yeah. Nintendo. <laughs> uh, that's, well, of course, Remy is the biggest and the strongest. Where are you, Remy? Don't hide. Yeah. Uh, and uh, Francois, also. Almost close behind compared to the usuals. There is myself and Thomas, uh, Guilhem, who's been doing all the crap we want on Android and pulling his head. And, uh, of course, Felix and David. Uh, those, is all, those are the stats only on desktops uh, and not on the Android and uh, iOS repos and you would get Thomas and Felix and David quite a bit up. Thank you. Any questions? Yes, Alex? What about taking a more proactive approach to security? It seems like people, someone invents a new fuzzer, you create a new class of crashes, and then you trace those down to the libraries and sort them out. Is there anything that can be done to try to ameliorate this before. So the question is about more proactive um, action of security. Kill uh, security researchers then? <laughs> <laughs> um, I think that so far most of the crashes we have is between LibEV Collect and the actual video drivers. So for example there was a guy who claimed he had a, an executable something on um, on VLC and push it to CNET and so on and everyone, of course, no one checked and did it. In the end, no one could reproduce the bug except himself and he could only reproduce it in Windows XP on a virtual machine. And in fact, it was a virtual box driver that was crashing and not VLC. How, how do we do anything about that? Um, so that's the first answer. The second answer is that no one is actually fuzzing seriously the baby codec and um, because of the fork, I think. It's a mess on both sides. Sorry, guys. 
uh, but it's a fucking mess. Um, and the Google people don't, I mean, what's, what's the name, Juru or something, don't fuzz anymore. But there is a new class of lot of fuzzes and there is an automatic uh, way to do that. Um, of course, we still have DEP and ASLR, but I don't think it's enough now on Windows. So I think that one of the ideas would be to work on Sandbox VLC. Uh, but where do you put the Sandbox? I mean, do you split between the codec and the demuxer? Do you speak about between the codec and the video output? Do you split between the access and the demuxers? How do you split between the video decoder and the video output if you want to have a um, MU Edge uh, support? That's the the everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> um, one interesting thing with about, I think, uh, Windows 10 is that something they call AppV? Is it AppV, Frederic? Yeah, it's, I think it's like Hyper-V, but for applications. So actually, VLC 3.0 actually runs in AppV for Windows 10. So as soon as they will, it's Project Centennial or something. So that would be interesting for Windows. Uh, for macOS, well, I have no idea if there is any way. And maybe on Linux, we can have an actual sandbox. I don't know. But seriously, if there is someone who is interested in doing a PhD on that, I think it's really interesting. <laughs> yes, Ben? Have you, uh, how many libraries have you taken over maintaining and, you know, libdvd read, libmpg123, what, what's the, what's the, <laughs> well, the question is, what libraries we haven't taken over yet? <laughs> Um, jokes aside, uh, libdvd read, libdvd nav, libdvd css, libblu-rays, well, the old dvd stacks and blu-ray stacks is now uh, maintained by me, basically. Uh, because, I'm sorry, but the M player guys are clueless. Um, it's not clueless, they are very clever. They just don't care about anything than Linux. And so that's not okay for us. Uh, now we have uh, libsmb, which is now our new Samba version. That is not really out yet because um, the Samba people told us that they were going to destroy us or something. Um, that was at the DSOC summit. Remember Vlad? Mm. Yeah, yeah. They were really nice. Um, we have also uh, uh, MDNS libraries almost out soon for MDNS for the Comcast. Um, but, I mean, when do we get Libem player on git.vidola? <laughs> Right after Yes. Uh, next question. Why, why does uh, VLC depend on anything other than libbaby codec? Um, for a few reasons. Um, the first reason is, for example, the uh, MPEG-3 decoder of libbaby codec is crap. And I don't know why. Can that just be changed upstream? Maybe. I mean, and that's something that is really weird. And I, I don't know, but if you make people test, they say, oh, you know, the libmad decoder is way better and sounds better than, um, than the libav codec one. And we had the issue also on Windows, um, Windows Phone, where actually we are using now the hardware decoder of MP3, which is probably more spec compliant than libmad. And, and people say, yeah, you had like this very nice sound before, and now it doesn't. So that's the reason. <laughs> But yeah, of course, there is all the audio field. But I mean, when, when there is one, one audio field, you laugh. But when people tell you that over and over and over, there is something. I don't know what. But feel free to check. Sorry. I mean, sorry. So that's the first reason. Uh, the second reason, so that's for libmp3, but I guess you don't care about that one. But we still use uh, libe52 and libdca, uh, and I guess this is the only ones we use. Huh? Only for the encoder? No. For the decoder, I think it's bumped down compared to libe codec. Um, no, maybe you're right. Um, so the first ones are libe52 and libdts. The reason is SPDIF output. Um, so, usually in VLC you have a decoder, filter, output, you know, it's amazing, like crazy new design, no one thought about that before. <laughs> and actually, libe52 and libdts are audio filters and not decoders. Because in VLC you can recreate the 
audio output filter chain and the video output filter chain without closing the decoder, <coughs> which allows you to move from SPDIF to a non-SPDIF. So your, video, your audio output says, okay, I can do SPDIF, you change the device in the UI, and it recreates the filter without dropping frames from the decoder, and you can't do that for the decoders. Which is also the reason why we only support uh, A52 and DTS over SPDIF and HDMI and not the other ones. Because that would mean that we need to move our LibV codec <laughs> de um, decoder from decoder to a video fi uh, audio filter. <laughs> and I believe it's a crappy idea. That fits your design. So, until we can actually do something that Thomas started doing but was uh, had patches rejected by Remy, <coughs> Um, we need to be able to restart the decoder uh, correctly, like we do the filters. And at that time, then we can move from <coughs> LibA52 and LibDTS to LibAV codec. LibMP3 answered. And for LibFAD, I think the reason is that LibFAD supports more uh, crap than LibAV codec and more crazy support. Uh, I, the problem is, I, people, I, I don't have a good test suite on AAC, so I don't know. Yes? So uh, before you mentioned like the UWP stuff for WinRT, and uh, so yeah, once once we build that, you get the you know we build it for Windows 10. You get it for Windows 10 Mobile for free. So the same app, you don't have to change anything. Okay. And for Xbox One, theoretically, even yes. though we can't push it yet because no one has a dev kit for it. Uh, but theoretically, you also get uh, uh, Windows IoT. Does this actually exist? It does. It does. You can you can get it from MSCN, and it does. I've tried it. It does work. You can't even though it's totally not practical. <coughs> you can't get it to run on a Raspberry Pi. So it does uh, Raspberry Pi too. It does work, even though it's like not usable for like video. It's very slow. Yes, but I think the driver was bad. What? The job three D driver was not finished. Yeah, it's it's it, it's functional. Yeah, it's basically uh, you can. It's just not really practical. Uh, and also like. Hololens and stuff like there are even though we don't have that theoretically we want because we have the app there it should once we can actually get the hardware and try it we don't we should theoretically not have to do any code change so where the other platforms you have to rewrite the UI you have to rewrite all this other stuff we should just be able to deploy it and it should be this it should being the key word because we don't have no hardware. Um, yes yeah. technically yes you're right in practice I doubt it. Um, but, and it was the same thing for Android TV. Oh, you can just use our compatibility <laughs> library. And in fact, you have to rewrite everything. But in technically, yes. Last question? Yes? If we have uh, plans for a heterogeneous solution for the video players or audio players, let's see if you use the GPU solutions. Um, maybe with open safe compliance or. Uh, Everything we've seen so far from uh, open can you the Yeah, question? the question is about uh, HSA, uh, CPU, GPU, hybrid solution, and so on. Uh, so far, everything we've seen from OpenCL and CUDA in X264, LibAV codec, LibAV format, everything was almost crap and slow and bad. So, sure. The only thing that is actually merged is OpenCL um, read ahead and analyzing in X264, right? Nothing else actually worked. Um, the reason, I think, is because basically OpenCL and CUDA are not done to do uh, both ways fast. It's done really to do something in GPU very complex and then just get a very small answer. While we need to do both ways all the time and very fast. So I have not seen anything and I have not seen anyone working on that. Good? Thanks very much.